What's going on everybody? The RCPC is complete. Truck and trailer fully finished and wrapped up. Now, as you can see, the truck looks basically like you've seen it in the last couple of videos. It is a Tamiya King hauler that I did a little bit of part swapping on with some extended frame rails and some kind of custom rear style fenders. But beyond that, mainly Tamiya King hauler. The box trailer that we have here is the Tamiya Deep Freeze semi-trailer kit. Now, inside of here is where everything is different, of course. If you've seen the previous videos, you've seen that the point of what we were trying to do is take and stuff a full gaming style computer inside of one of these trailers. Matt from the Skill Builders Guild and myself, we both picked trucks and trailers and we tried to make our own versions of the RCPC concept. From the outside, other than this little area, looks mainly like a box semi-trailer. If you've seen the previous videos though, you'll know that behind this outside appearance, there's something that looks much more like a gaming computer that lies behind it. But what you haven't seen since the last video is this new updated outside panel. I did panels that go on both the front and backside. This is the panel off of the side that you can't see right now. They're made from acrylic and I laser cut them and then had some magnets that were countersunk into the back side. Now those magnets help hold it onto the side of the trailer firmly, but I also added a couple of these kind of tabs that help hold it into place specifically for the driving portion. The computer is functional with these panels. There is a perforated design here over where the fans actually intake for the front side or exhaust here on the rear side. We've gone through the specs of this in previous videos, but a quick rundown. We've got an EVGA ITX size motherboard, an Intel Core i5 processor, an EVGA AIO with a 120 millimeter radiator that sits up here in the front behind the reefer unit that this trailer has. So it's kind of a functional chiller in a way. I have a 500 gig M.2 SSD on that EVGA board. Got 16 gig of Vengeance RAM, and we've got a 2060 KO graphics card here that you can see through the side panel. Additionally, we've got the seven inch TFT monitor built into the side, which is functional. You can completely use this PC like you see it here. You don't need an external monitor. Everything can be ran just like this. And I'm actually gonna play American Truck Simulator on this later in the video. In the previous videos, I hadn't shown the finalized rear IO that I built. I recessed this panel in about an inch. I've got a expansion slot over here, which would have normally been used on the front of a PC case, like where an optical drive usually would have gone. This gave me some available USB as well as uh, front panel style audio jacks. I also integrated in a power plug here. So now the power for the whole unit just plugs in in this location. I did have to make my own power cord that went from the PSU to this plug, and now your standard power plug just plugs in there. Much more convenient, very easy to get to, and it's something that I wanted to try and make as simple as possible for actually using this thing. And then right here, I've got a display port. Now that goes to the 2060KO, and then I've just got this jack here. The HDMI output that the 2060KO has, it is running the actual actual seven inch monitor that you saw on the front side. So try and make it as user friendly as possible for whatever you could possibly want to use this computer for. Now to wrap this challenge up, Matt and I have discussed and decided on a number of driving and benchmarking items that we wanna to do to try and measure the vehicle's performance, both the actual RC side and the PC side. So what we're going to do is we've decided on using Cinebench as far as the PC benchmarking. We're also going to take idle temperatures and peak temperatures during Cinebench. And then we're also going to play the truck simulators. Now I'm going to play the American truck simulator and record my FPS during it. Matt's going to play the Euro version of the same game. Be a little bit different, but I don't expect that that's going to make a huge difference. I think that we're both going to max those out if I'm honest. So. Beyond that, then we've got the actual RC side of this. And what we've decided to do there is three driving tests. The first one that we're going to do is going to have the trailer stationary. We're going to have to drive the truck up, hook up to the Kingpin, drive off, do a 360 degree turn, and then back the trailer back into its spot. 
The parking spot for the trailer is going to be four inches wider and the length of the trailer. Then we're going to do a little slalom run. We're gonna have five cones set up 10 feet between them and we're just gonna slalom through them as quickly as possible. And for the last test, we're going to do a 50 foot drag race, but in reverse. Let me get this thing plugged in, powered up. We're gonna see what kind of performance this thing has. And then we're gonna go hit the parking lot and see if I can drive this truck. Now it's time to do the benchmarking. And if you're not familiar with what the term benchmarking means, whether in PCs or anything. It's just using a standardized test that you can compare to others and know that you're on a similar playing field. I'm going to first fire up Cinebench though, and we're going to see what kind of scores that we get in that benchmarking software. I'm running the PC in dual monitor setup. I've got the small monitor here on the side of the PC, and then I'm actually using one of my other monitors plugged into the backside of the IO shield that I built so that I can have a, a larger display. So we're going to get our score in Cinebench and we're going to watch both idle and the peak temperature under load during that benchmarking. So let's fire this thing up and see what we get. We're going to do both the CPU multi-core and CPU single core tests. And we're just wrapping up the first benchmark, the multi-core peak temp was, it just, it showed 74 degrees C for like just a half a second. Our score for that test was 5206. Second test came out to be 5055, which I think the first test was 5206. So I'm glad I did rerun the multi-core score test because our final score was 5401. So our single core benchmark is ending now, waiting for the score to pop up after it just finishes these last few tiles. And our score on the single core is 1077, raising our MP ratio to 5.02. My peak temperature during the single core test was 45 degrees C. So it stayed quite a bit cooler during that test. That's going to do it for my Cinebench testing. So now I'm going to pull up the American Truck Simulator and we're going to run that, just see what kind of FPS we're getting. I'm going to guess with the age of that game, we should get a pretty high frame rate without much sweat out of this hardware. It seems appropriate for the game that we play it on the actual PC monitor first to see how it goes. Go into the settings and just see if there's any Graphic settings. We put it onto ultra settings. Let's see how that goes. We can pick Sacramento as our starting city, which is where I'm at. So let's do that. Uh, do you walk through the tutorial? Let's just wing it. We're maintaining 60 FPS as would be expected. I mean, I am running some pretty tiny resolution, but I'm playing a game on an RC car. So what can we expect? Corner of that gate, we cleared it even on this seven inch monitor that we're rocking. I feel like this is some good practice for when I'm about to take this thing out into the road and try driving it. We'll have to see if there's any backing up practice on this. Oh, I just ran a red light. Red light violation. Whew, real close to that car. Oh, crash with vehicle offense. Damn it. I feel like this game actually would be quite a lot of fun. Not even for a second ducking out of 60 frames per second though. And my GPU, I can tell, is not even starting to kind of sweat. Even on Ultra, this uh, game is putting a load of about 40% onto the GPU. Temp is still around 34. This thing's only got one fan kicking on right now even. Temps on the actual CPU still 34, 35, 36 range, not hardly wavering. Oh, we got a toll booth. Oh. <laughs> Uh, our truck did not like hitting a toll booth at 76 miles an hour. Oh no. <laughs> it seems like more of a matte way to end a challenge, but either way, I think we got what we needed out of there. Maintaining 60 FPS on that game. Yes. There are many other games that we could do, but that got us what we needed. Okay, we're out here at the place where I'm gonna actually film these driving tests, which happens to be a freight kind of dock setup. Anyway, so the first test I'm gonna do is the slalom test. I've set up five cones, whatever you wanna call it, 10 feet apart. We're gonna start five feet in advance and we're gonna end just five feet after the last one. So this will be our first setup. I've got the truck out. I've already actually test drove it a little bit. Feeling pretty comfortable. Here we go. One, two, three, throttle.
time. I'm gonna try it again from the opposite direction. Ready, go. Time. Much faster, much tighter to the cones that time. Basically able to keep it pinned the whole time. I currently have it in second gear. I could probably go to third. All right, ready, go. Stop time. Now that we already had the 50 feet marked out for the slalom course, we're gonna do the reverse drag race, meaning we've gotta traverse those 50 feet in reverse. We've got our starting marker and our end marker. We've got the other camera set up down there by it. We're gonna back the truck up into position to the marker and we're trying to see how fast we can get to the second point. Attempt number one. Let's see what kind of time we get out of this starting. Oof. <laughs> All right, we're aborting that one. Let's try that again. <laughs> Reset, let's try again. Attempt number two, starting. Too much. No, Jack, God damn it. I made it so close. Attempt number three, starting. Stop. Oh, we're in the 15 second range. Let's try that again. Starting again. Oh, almost jackknifed. Set, reverse. No, I cannot drive from behind it. We'll try from this end, going the other way. All right, on three, you're gonna go one, two, three. Uh, jackknife, and right before the end, 50 feet is the perfect length to find out where you're gonna screw up. Set, reverse. Ah, uh, again, it was right there. Got greedy and punched it. Set, reverse. All right, slow start. Trying to kind of keep an arc the whole time seems to help rather than just going straight. Stop time. Jackknifed it past the end, but, but right there. Like that, I'm pretty pleased with that run overall, I think. So now I've got to set up the last course. And what this one is, is that I'm gonna disconnect the trailer. We're gonna park it. I'm gonna mark the parking spot where the trailer is, because I've got to reverse into, hook up to the trailer, drive out, do a 360 degree turn, and then back the trailer back into the spot within the lines. The lines are gonna be four inches wider than the trailer itself, and the parking spot will be the length of the trailer. I'm gonna get this spot lined up, and see what we can do.
we're gonna pull forward and then back into place. I am gonna have to lower the legs on the front of the trailer manually, just because that automatic retract isn't clicking in for some reason, so set, start. Stop time. We're in the lines. Not terribly bad, but not. No, we're not even close to straight. I don't know, maybe we should redo that one. Let's try it again. Three, two, one, going. Start time. Gonna get a good, better straight back in this time. Still needed a back in attempt. Ah, we're gonna need two. Stop time. That's much straighter that time. We are completely within the lines this time. So, just still try it again. It's a lot of fun actually. Start time. Start time. We're gonna be able to one shot it. Nope. Set it right at the end. Stop time. Perfect. Just dead nuts between the lines that time. But we still did need one reposition. So let's see if we can do it without that. Start time. Long back this time, long back. Ooh, got a little waggy. Boom, nailed it, first attempt. For almost perfectly straight, little off angle, but well within the lines and in one shot. I'm calling that a success. I'm gonna drain the rest of this pack driving around and then we're gonna head back to the studio. And that's gonna wrap up the RCPC. That series was a blast. It was a long project, but it was a big project at the same time. I wanna say a huge thanks to EVGA for supplying so much of the PC hardware and to Tamiya for supplying the truck and trailer that we use to make these things. Matt's truck came out amazing. His paint and detail work he put into that truck came out stellar. We definitely took two 
wildly different approaches to trying to accommodate the same principle into those vehicles. But make sure you go check out his video as well. I'll link to it in the description below. Matt and I will definitely talk about our results and compare our driving techniques and styles and skills on our Wednesday night live takeover show. Make sure and check that out. It's every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Check it out. Definitely this one's going to be a fun topic to get into. I'm super excited to actually see Matt's numbers. I do not know them yet at all. We both got these videos edited and we haven't told each other what the results are. So I'll find out the same time you do. As always, thanks for watching these videos. Again, thanks to Tamiya and EVGA and Matt at the Scale Builder Guild for diving into this project along with me. But as always, thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed these videos. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.